As you mentioned, this is a like an adjunct to the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children story. So you had Hollow City, right. uh, in which this very book, Tales of the Peculiar, is mentioned. It's one of Millard's, the Invisible right. Boy's favorite books. Um, but when did you decide it was time to write other ones and actually fill out those those stories that you'd mentioned in the novel? I kind of wanted to do it right away as I was writing Hollow City, but of course I had to finish Hollow City. And then when I finished Hollow City, I realized that there was a lot more story left to tell, so I had to write Library of Souls. So it was many years before I actually was able to uh, eat my dessert, if you will, and, and write the Tales of the Peculiar, which is something I'd been wanting to do for, uh, for a long time. What's down the road for you? I know there was an announcement that you have like a new... I'm writing new... another uh, Miss Peregrine trilogy. Mm -hmm. So there's three more books coming over the next three-ish years. And the next one's next fall, is that right? Yeah. In, in 2017, and then yeah. two more after that. Yeah, so I really should be working. Um, <laughs> I'm going to see, see you later. <laughs> Got to go home. Uh, how has the uh, movie experience changed the fandom that you have? You already have like a pretty strong group of peculiar fans, uh, but yeah. now there's a movie out there. Are you finding a lot more people discovering the world through Tim Burton's film? Uh, you know, it's funny because I've only had like one event since the movie stuff, so I've yet to kind of like really gauge the effect it's had. And yeah, there are definitely people who are, who, you know, will come to events and been like, I haven't read any of them yet, but I'm looking forward to it. And I'm like, that's interesting. That usually doesn't happen at events, so, okay. Authors talk about it being kind of a strange experience to have their work adapted for the screen. Any, yeah. uh, you're, you're, you're not really a part of it, you're partly included, but partly not, right. but it's your thing and other people are playing with your toys. What was the experience like for you? Yeah, it's kind of like you build the sandbox and then they get to play in it, which is, which is interesting. Except Tim is like, I'm going to build another, like an, uh, another piece of the sandbox over here and there's going to be a slide. And I'm like, that's cool too. I, I like the slide. Um, so yeah, you get a lot of credit for stuff you didn't do, which is uh, kind of cool, but I feel like I always have to remind people that I didn't, I didn't make the movie. Um, but I was so thrilled to be, uh, you know, just get to stand on the sidelines while one of my favorite, all-time favorite filmmakers, you know, did his thing mm -hmm. for three years. It was a, this incredible process that, you know, I went to film school a mile away at USC and um, I know just enough about making movies to get myself in trouble. So it was great to sort of be like behind the scenes on this movie where I was like, you know, the cinematographer is, is the guy who shot Amelie and the, you know, Colleen Atwood did the, she's a three-time Oscar winner who did the costumes and all of these people who I know from other, th you know, like the best of the best are the craftsmen who are, who are working on this. So to have like that caliber of people sort of servicing a story I wrote, you know, by myself in my one bedroom apartment in Hollywood five years ago was like truly surreal and humbling and very cool. Ooh.